Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth, Depth on Now You Know. Last week on In Depth, we talked about the supercharger apocalypse. <laughs> Yes. How Model 3 is going to take over the world and, and there'll, be no, there'll be no superchargers left, left for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that... Tesla listened to us. Tesla cares. I mean, we weren't too concerned, but a lot of other No, I mean, Tesla Tesla's owners... listened to our in-depth, I think. I oh, mean, really? Well, don't you think? I mean, just this week they announced that they're opening like a thousand superchargers in California. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. That could mean that Elon just hangs around watching our episodes <laughs> and then responds to us. Right. So, I mean, this is um, a change in strategy, it looks like, for superchargers. Yes, this um, is a major shift in strategy. This right. is a game changer, I have to tell you here. So, this, I think, comes a lot from the people that we've heard on our comments who say, you know, I don't own my own house. I'm going to have trouble parking and charging my Tesla because, like, you know, I live in the middle of New York City. How am I going to charge my Tesla? The nearest supercharger is way out of the way and, you know, like... Yeah, well, I have no place to charge. Right, it. I can't charge. It. Even if you own your own house in, say, a city or you know, apartment or a condo, right, it can be very difficult to get to... the electrical. Like many people said to us, even like in England, like, okay, what am I supposed to do? Run a, an extension cord across the sidewalk? Right, like, that's not going to work for me. Well, this changes could change everything. So, what are we talking about? Yeah, we are talking about giant supercharging stations. We're talking like. 20 plus superchargers all in this little area. Mm -hmm. um, so basically you can think of it like a gas station and this is for urban areas. All the superchargers that we've looked at so far have been between point A and point B. Yeah, so let's talk about the original strategy of, of Tesla, and they stated this, was mm -hmm. to be able to allow you to do long distance travel in your car. So right. to go like we did on, on cross country trips, right? right? Between states. And that's still what you can use them for. But right. now with this new change, you're adding this whole new level where you're almost treating it like a gas station. Right. So that if you live in the city, you can charge up not far from where you live and treat that as your gas station. Right. Because before, all the superchargers were along routes. They were, they were intentionally left out of cities because they didn't want people charging up at the superchargers. And these superchargers between, you know, in, on routes um, are smaller. They have typically somewhere between four to eight to 12 stalls. Um, you know, 12 being the very biggest we've ever seen. Usually it's around, you know, six to eight to 10. Um, and having a supercharger of this size means that it's not going to be an issue when, you know, people are charging there and stuff like that. It's going to be, it's, I think it's just super smart. Right. It answers all of your, your, you know, you had some last minute things that just wouldn't allow you to buy a car if you lived in like New York. You're like, oh, I love the idea of it. I can maybe now afford the Model 3, but I live you know, in this place that I can't charge, so I just don't feel comfortable buying it. Right. Well, now, let's just kind of picture this. You own the car. You don't charge it at home. Right. You have some electricity left in the battery mm -hmm. that morning you go off to work or whatever, and on your way to work, you stop at a supercharger, charge it up to like 80%, and right. now you're probably good for the week because you live in a city. That's true. I mean, Tesla batteries are large enough that it basically acts like a gas tank, um, and so if, you know, during your normal week, you don't have to, um, you know, gas up, you know, right. I mean, every two days, then I think you're probably going to be good. Yeah. I mean, most of us probably put gas in our regular ice car tanks once a week, something like that. Right. And same thing would be true here. You'd, once a week, you'd stop at a supercharger, go get a cup of coffee, come back and you would pay for this, right? Because you only get a thousand free miles roughly a year, 400 kilowatts That's a year. True. So you would, you would pay for this, um, but, but it's honestly, cheaper than gas. Right. And you'd be paying for it anyway, because it's going to be the price of electricity. Um, which, so basically if you had a home charger, that's what you were going to be paying for anyway. Exactly. And it'll definitely be cheaper than a lot of the other networks like ChargePoint and EVgo and, and lots of other ones that are in all sorts of different places because they typically try and make money off of the electricity. Whereas Tesla right. has already made money off you that the, you bought the car. Right. And this is just to keep you going basically. Right. I mean, look at these maps. It's showing that because so basically Tesla updated their 2017 maps. Um, and we can see in gray where they're planning on opening one soon. So we can see that all these cities like Montreal, Toronto, Washington, Seattle, even in San Francisco, which, you know, is their home turf, they're adding tons more superchargers. Manhattan, for instance, is going to have three superchargers on the Isle of Manhattan. Wow. 
Like that was never their plan before. But I think this all came about because of the Model 3. Right. I they think used that... their data from, from reservations to show where they should start putting these chargers. And I think what they were thinking is the original Model S and Model X and the Roadster, I think for the most part that those were people who probably lived in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. Right, probably had the ability to charge at home because they had a garage or something, mm-hmm. um, or maybe they had two homes or three homes, right? Because right. these are expensive cars. Um, the Model Three, I'm betting, is more urban. Right? Yeah, I, mean, I think it will be. I think it's just it's able to get out to more people, and so you know everyone will be able to drive one. And this is kind of exciting. If you look at companies like ChargePoint, they only have 371 DC fast chargers in the US last year. Wow. Okay. And that sounds like a lot, right? 371. Right. Um, Just to give you some idea, Tesla has more in the LA metro area by the end of the year than ChargePoint has in the entire US. Wow. They can't even produce and install as many charging points as Tesla can in one metro area. Right. It's just amazing what Tesla can do. So, I mean, if you're watching this and you don't have a Tesla yet, you may not quite understand how powerful their network is. Right. But it just, it allows you to go anywhere. And with these new um, Metropolitan Superchargers, it's going to allow you to charge in the city, which before was, you could not do. So, I have some questions for you viewers out there. For those of you who live in urban areas and were maybe on the fence about getting an electric car. Does this change your mind at all? Does this maybe th- make you think twice about going and taking a test drive of a Model 3 when they come out or a Model S or something? I mean, how much of a game changer is this for you? I think that's an important question. Is this is Tesla onto something or does it make no difference to you? You're still not going to do it because of, you know, you just don't want to drive to a supercharger or you don't think this will work. Right. So yeah, let us know that. All right, so thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. Um, If you really like this video, hit the subscribe button. We are um, getting a whole bunch new subscribers. It's super exciting. So thank you to everyone who has been watching us for the longest time. There's been quite a few people who are like, I knew you when you were 200 subscribers. That's awesome. Um, But I just want to thank you to all of our subscribers because this is totally it's exciting. We're, Very exciting. I think uh, by the time you're watching this, we'll be at over 20,000. When we talked to you last week, we were at 18,000. So we've so. added 2,000 new subscribers. Hello, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, it is just so exciting. And we have some big news that you're going to hear tomorrow on Tesla Time News about what we're doing for our 20,000 subscriber um, limit that we just hit there <laughs> um, that we're blowing past. So be sure to stay tuned to Tesla Time News tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Now you, you know. know.